Hi folks, Greeno here, out and about in a beautiful sunny Dublin once again. Now, I've spent the night here and it's time to get some breakfast. And you can't just get any breakfast while you're here in Dublin, can you? You've got to go for a full Irish breakfast. So, I've been having a little look around what's good around my, the area where my hotel is. And apparently this place behind me, this bright yellow building, is a good place to get an Irish breakfast. This is called the Hairy Lemon, which is an interesting name. I'm not quite sure why it's called that. We'll see if we can find out. But yeah, apparently they've got a cracking Irish breakfast going on. So let's get inside and find out what it's all about. So there's a sign here on the outside of the pub, which actually gives the little story about who the Hairy Lemon is and why the pub is called that. So I'll show that to you on the screen now. Right guys, I'm inside and I am seated. Apologies if you can hear Coldplay banging on in the background. <laughs> the music's quite loud in here. So I've had a little look through the breakfast menu. I'll show you that up on the screen shortly. And obviously, I'm not gonna go for any of the other options. It's gotta be the full Irish breakfast. That comes with a pot of tea, which I've already had brought over to me. And it's 15 euro for an Irish breakfast with a cup of tea. Now I don't think that's too bad, is it? Right, let's see a little bit of b-roll there of me making the tea. I had a bit of stick on a video I made recently because I didn't stir the tea afterwards. <laughs> so I put the milk in and give it a stir. It's steaming hot. But yeah, that's a decent brew. I don't know about you guys, but for me, if you're having a cooked breakfast, English breakfast, Irish breakfast, Scottish, whatever, it has got to come with tea. Coffee just doesn't cut it, does it? Coffee first thing in the morning, but we're gonna fry up. Got to be tea. Let me know if you agree with me down in the comments. My breakfast has just arrived and it is a monster. <laughs> Take a closer look. Well, this really is a mighty old breakfast, isn't it? So what have we got on here? There's uh, some white and brown toast here, hiding away at the back. A gravy boat full of beans, which is a nice little twist on the usual little uh, ramekin you get. We've got two sausages, two nice looking bits of bacon, fries, two fried eggs, a hash brown, so we've got fries and hash brown on here, black pudding, white pudding, tomato, and I forgot to ask them not to put the mushrooms on. So we've got mushrooms here. I'll probably give them a try seeing as they're on the plate. Uh, the toast is unbuttered. We have two little pats of butter here to add that myself as I want to. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cut open the eggs. Always gotta do that first, I keep being told, because uh, otherwise they might continue to cook and it doesn't give a fair representation of where they're at. So I'm gonna clear some of these bits and bobs out of the way so we can have a good look, bring you in a bit closer. So here we go, folks. Let's cut this egg open and see what we're dealing with here. Unfortunately, that one's a little bit over. I guess it's all personal taste, but I prefer mine less cooked. It's a little bit more runny in that one there, as we can see. But for me, yeah, a little bit less cookery would have been good. But we're not going to let our judgment of the whole breakfast be clouded by the fact the eggs were a little overdone. Get a little bit of salt on there and on the fries. A little bit of pepper on my eggs too. Gives them a nice little flavour. Well, there's a whole range of sauces here in a nice little bucket. So I think this is what they use this throughout the day because no one's putting uh, mayo and stuff on their cooked breakfast, I wouldn't have thought. We've got some uh, brown sauce here, so that's what I'm going to be going with, some brown sauce today. 
get that on for the sausages and the bacon. Where are we going to start then? There's so much to choose from, isn't there? Right, let's go for the little bit of this egg. So the actual white of the egg looks cooked really nicely. The yolk, like I say, a touch overdone for my taste, but definitely tasty. Let's see how that goes with the chips. Egg and chips is something I used to have a lot as a kid, growing up in the 70s. Simple food, relatively uh, inexpensive food. And they're only sort of little skin on fries, but they're pretty tasty, it has to be said. Cooked nicely, nice and crispy, and you match it with that nice, soft, silky egg, and it's a very, very nice combination. We'll see how it works with the hash brown. Now, it's a little bit unusual to have two different potato products on a breakfast, isn't it? Obviously, potatoes are a bit of a, a staple here. That hash brown is actually quite nice. Quite a pronounced onion flavour to it. You know what, I'm slowly being converted to this hash brown thing as long as it's a decent one. And this one is really nice and crispy. You can see a nice golden colour on it. It's really good. And it actually has some decent flavour, so that's a, that's a win. Still got Coldplay banging on in the background. It's obviously a, a whole playlist of Coldplay. That would be enough to put me off normally. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Let's move on to the sausages now. Ireland is famed for its sausages and the pork sausages on a breakfast are kind of what it's all about here. So we'll cut into that. It's a nicely cooked sausage, nice coloration all round and inside it's just a plain sausage. You don't get Cumberland or any of that sort of flavourings in there, peppers and herbs and stuff. It's just a pork sausage and it's a tasty sausage. Not the meatiest I don't think. It's quite finely ground which probably means there's a little bit of rusk or something, or additional rusk mixed into it compared to normal. Obviously, Richmond sausages are from Ireland, aren't they? So, you, you know, you get a little bit of that going on. Yeah, all good. Thank you very much. The service actually here has been quite friendly. Come over, took my order, allowed me to like pick where I wanted to sit. And uh, yeah, they've been very, very friendly and attentive so far. No issues there. So, bacon time now. Let me move these sausages out of the way so we can get a better look at this bacon. Because these are big, big pieces of bacon. Look at that. What a big slice of bacon that is. For my personal taste, I'd like a little bit more cookery on it. I like my bacon a bit crispier so that the fat crisps up. But, let's give it a try. But it's nice quality bacon. But because the fat hasn't been cooked as much as I'd like, I'm going to have to cut that out because it's just a little bit flabby and unappetising. The rest of the bacon though, it's flavoursome, like I say, just not quite cooked as I'd like it, but it won't stop me eating it, that's for sure. <laughs> Still a few more items that we haven't got round to yet, let's get a little bit of toast butter, shall we? I've got one slice of white toast, one slice of brown toast here. Now, there's nothing special about this toast. I was kind of hoping to get maybe some soda bread or something along those lines. But this is just normal, cheapish supermarket bread. But they're cooked nice enough. Give it a little bite. Nice and crispy. I've got a few of these beans on there. See how they are. They're nice beans. They've not been overdone. You can tell they've been freshly cooked to order. They've still got their structural integrity, which is a good thing. That's a good quality bean, that is. Around this side of the plate, as you can see here, move that bacon fat out of the way. We have the two types of pudding here. We have the mushrooms and a piece of tomato. Now the tomato, in fairness, looks really nicely cooked. Properly cooked through. In fact, I'm going to have to take these beans out of the way a second so I can cut into it. As you can see, it's going to ooze juice all over the plate there. Mm. A little bit of herb on the top of there. Some oregano. Just to elevate the flavour a touch. That is good. That really is good. Now, the mushrooms here are little kind of button mushrooms that have been chopped into little quarters or even little slices if they're bigger ones. We'll give it a try. You know I'm not going to be a big fan though. Again, a little bit of herb on there. 
And they're cooked nicely, in fairness. I still can't really get on with them, but the flavour is actually really good. Let's try another bit. Yeah, that texture just does it for me. But you know what? In terms of the flavour of a mushroom on a breakfast, that's probably about the best I've had. Really, really tasty. Be great in a soup or a sauce or something where you can't actually squidge down on the mushroom. Right, next up, black pudding. It's a very, very nice big disc of it here, nice and thick. Let's cut it open and have a look inside. So it's cooked all the way through there, you can see. Nice and steaming hot still. We'll give that a try. I find that Irish black pudding is possibly even a bit tastier than the one back home. It's finer ground, so you don't get those big lumps of fat in there. That is tasty. For me, possibly, you get a little, little more seasoning in it. A crack more pepper or something would we'll just elevate that up a little level. But it's already good. And then, of course, we've got the white pudding here. Or hogs pudding, as it's known sometimes. So we'll cut that one open again so you can take a little look inside there so you can see the difference in colour in there already. It's kind of beige in the centre. It's not made with the blood, that's why. <laughs> again, nice and kind of crispy on the outside. Nice and soft inside. And that does have a little bit more pepper to it. Mm. That, in my opinion, is the better of the two puddings, the white pudding. Now, that's like overall, for 15 euros, including a nice little pot of tea, this is really good value. So, <clears throat> I'm going to munch a bit more on this and we'll head outside and we'll sum it up. But I've got to say, overall, a few little quibbles, but pretty happy boy. Well then guys, so that is the full Irish breakfast at the Hairy Lemon here in the sort of Temple Bar area of Dublin. What did I make of it? Do you know what, overall, I think it was a decent breakfast. Uh, the sausages, proper sort of traditional Irish sausages, perfect for a cooked breakfast. The bacon was nice bacon, just needed a bit more cookery in my opinion, whereas the eggs needed a bit less cookery in my opinion. Uh, the puddings were nice, the black and the white pudding. I preferred the white. Uh, the beans were good, the toast was toast you know it would have been nicer to get a more traditional Irish kind of bread than just cheap supermarket bread but it is what it is um, yeah overall I think a pretty solid decent breakfast now when I went in I'd actually looked online about the pricing and it said it was 15 euros for a breakfast but it's actually 16 you probably picked that up on the on the menu kind of bit of b-roll anyway so yes yeah, so I paid 16 euros for that breakfast and a pot of tea which was basically one and a half cups of tea in there so reasonable enough what did i think of it overall though i quite like the place it's one of those sort of typical traditional irish pubs lots of dark wood kind of dingy inside but you kind of want that from a traditional pub don't you um kind of hard to tell what it would be normally like because there's halloween decorations everywhere but i quite yeah i quite like the little vibe in it it was busy enough i say there was by the time i left pretty much every table in the breakfast area was was in use people from all over the place there were some french people some germans but also locals in there so yeah so a, a well used venue let's put it that way in terms of the value for money 16 euros what's that just over 13 pounds i think probably about 13 pound 30 odd something around those kind of lines i think that's decent enough value for what i got it was a really big breakfast I said chips and hash browns, possibly not necessary, but you know, it is what it is. Um, what am I going to score it? I think, hmm, for the price, 16 euro, 13.30 in sterling, I think that's got to be a four out of five breakfast, doesn't it? There or thereabouts. A few things that I think should have been cooked a little bit better, um, but it's a really, really big, substantial plate of food that will set you up for the day. Does it get green nose, green light? It does, it does. I, I, like I say, if I was to go back in there again, knowing what I know now, I could ask them to cook the eggs a little bit less. I could ask them to crisp the bacon a little bit more and that would elevate the breakfast a little bit more. But yeah, for what I got, pretty happy. 
Green O's Green Light. If you're ever in Dublin, check this place out. I mean, you can't blooming miss it, can you? Morning guys, if you've enjoyed this video looking at the Hairy Lemon here in Temple Bar in Dublin, don't forget, click a thumbs up on the video for me, does help. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out more of the content, then you can always subscribe, ding your bell for notifications. YouTube will tell you whenever I upload then and you won't miss anything. I appreciate everyone who does that. So, where next? Who knows? You'll have to wait till the next video to find out, won't you? I'll see you then.